All right, Ephesians chapter 4. Okay. Amen. Amen. That's Galatians 2.20. Yeah. Yeah. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to read these verses down through here. Beginning in verse 1, Paul says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now, here's the sevenfold unity of the Spirit. There is one body. Well, it must be spiritual, right? Amen. One Spirit. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, what is it? To receive spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Amen? The hope of your calling goes back to Ephesians 1. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. Now there's many denominations. <laughs> many baptisms. But when it comes to the spirit, there's only one faith and one baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. But, now here's a contrast, guys. Y'all see that but there? See, a lot of Christians love the positional stuff. They love the corporate and the positional. But notice what he says, unto every one of us, that's you individually now, right, is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. We are the recipients, man, of one man's victory. Amen. You realize how, how great that man is? Yeah. That man conquered death. <laughs> Y'all want to give it a shot? Huh? Huh? That man, that man took away the sins of the world. That man cast out the prince of this world. And then he ascended up on high, Bill, and dispensed to us the great spoils of his victory and exultation and his heights in the heavenly places. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, being, being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, being a child in the faith, never growing up in Christ, is a dishonor to the head of the body. It's a dishonor to God and it's a dishonor to his son. For justified, saved people that are in the body of Christ to continuously be tossed to and fro, not have any stability in their life, not have any type of maturity in Christ. Paul says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. 
Now, this morning we're going to continue our study. We didn't get to do it last week because of, of Easter and all that. But we've been looking at our, uh, a Bible study on the subject of the body of Christ. And I told you we were going to cover five things concerning the body of Christ. We were going to talk about its position, our position, how we get into it, how we become. Paul's getting ready to tell you that the church, you know what he's going to tell you in Ephesians 5? You know what the church is? It's bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. We are members of his body. Christ and his church are one. The body of Christ is a new man. A new creature that's being created by God in his son. And God has been in the creative process of this now for 2,000 years. How big you think it is? Amen. Guarantee it's, it's bigger than anything the UN's got planned. Agenda 20, agenda 2030, whatever agenda they got. I guarantee you what God has been doing for the last 2,000 years in his son. The day that it's revealed. And called out of this world, it's going to be amazing what God has created in Jesus Christ. Amen. And you are now a part of that new creation, that new creature. And so we, we got into this. We got into this position. We've looked at that. What is the purpose of this new creature? What is the purpose? If any man be in Christ, he is what? A new what? Preacher. <laughs> But what is the purpose of this new creature? Why is God creating this new man, this new creature in Christ? This morning we're going to look at the perfecting of this body. And then next week we're going to begin to look at the presentation. Paul's going to talk about it in Ephesians 5. Christ gave himself for the church, it's past. That he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water by the word, that's now. That he may present it to himself, that's future. So Christ already gave himself for the church. He's now sanctifying, cleansing it by the ministration of his word. And one of these days he's going to present it to himself. Amen. For the purpose that God gave it to him for. You are, God gave you to his son. Amen. You are, guess what? That's why Paul says that you might know the riches of the glory of his inheritance and who? The saints. You are, you, you are given to Jesus Christ for a purpose. And Christ has a purpose with us. We are his body. We, we, are the, we are the means or the power that he's going to use to execute the power and authority that God has given him in creation. And he is now, he's now doing a ministry presently from his heavenly position in perfecting and sanctifying the church for the day of presenting it to himself as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. That's right. Amen, preacher. And so we've been looking at this and then the last thing we're going to look at is the power of that body. Guys, if you only knew where, where God has seated you and what he's given us to do in eternity, it'd blow your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so what we've looked at so far is our calling. How are you called into this new creature? You were called by the gospel of Christ. Amen. Every man that's ever heard that gospel was called by God. Amen. You know how many people have turned that call down? And if they only knew what they were turning down. They are turning down an, an eternal inheritance as a son of God. In a world without end, so that they can go spend eternity in a lake of fire. That's what they're doing. The moment God told you, the, the, the moment a man came to you, or you read it in a gospel tract or in a Bible, however you heard it, the moment you heard the gospel of God concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and heard how that that man died for your sins, that he was buried and rose again the third day, and that all who believe on him are justified by faith with God. Yeah. Yeah. The moment you heard that gospel, you received the Spirit of God through the hearing of faith. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the moment you, this is why Paul said that God chose us the salvation, how? Through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. 
The moment you believe the truth, the Spirit of God set you apart. You are now sealed in Christ with God's Spirit until the day of the redemption of the purchased possession. And the moment you heard that gospel and believed it, you were baptized by God's Spirit into the body of His Son. Amen. You're not in, listen guys, you're not in the flesh anymore, you're in, in the Spirit. And being in the Spirit, you're in Christ. And being in Christ, you're raised up and seated in heavenly places right now in God's Son. Amen. You see, that goes back to walking after the Spirit again and not after the flesh. This calling and baptism into Christ is according to God's own purpose and grace that was given to us in Christ before the world began. Your calling in time. Get this. When, when were you called? You were called up here in time. Right? You were called by the gospel. And the moment you believed that gospel, you were baptized into one body. But did you know that this calling into this body is according to a purpose that God gave us? Before the world even began. Amen. Yeah. I mean. Guys that ought to intrigue you. Amen. Ten million years from now. That's the only thing that's going to be going on anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Where's Rome? <coughs> Where's the Caesars? Mm -hmm. Where's the Greeks? The Athenians, the Trojans, where's the Spartans? Where's the Mongols? Where's the tail of the Hun? Brethren, when all time has run its course, there's only one thing that's going to stand in eternity, and it's the eternal purpose that God purposed in His Son, Jesus Christ Amen. our Lord. That's it. Amen. And when you got called by the gospel, you were called into this purpose that God gave us in Christ before the world began. And it's his eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. You're now a part of that eternal purpose in Christ. Amen. Amen. What is it? Look at Colossians chapter 1. The Bible contains such deep, deep things that I've read for 20 years, time and time again, but because my understanding of words have always been limited to a carnal understanding of words. Guys, if, if you're going to, you got a book of words, is that, is that clear? Amen. The words in this book have meaning, Okay. And Webster's cannot always define the words of this book. Yeah. Nor Cambridge, nor Oxford. You have to let the Spirit of God teach you the meaning of the words of this book. Amen? For example, God's getting ready to tell you you were delivered from the power of darkness. What is that? What, just no light? Or did the Bible begin that way? Doesn't the Bible begin with God saying, let there be light and separating the light from the darkness, dividing the light from the darkness, mm -hmm. calling the light day and the darkness night capitalized? Day and night, they are capitalized. And it has nothing to do with day and night as you perceive it. Because the sun, the moon, and the stars don't show up for four more days. There's two dominions there, one of light and one of darkness, two kingdoms. And you're either a child of the night yeah. and of darkness or you are a child of the day and of the light. Yeah. And God delivered you from the power of darkness, a kingdom and a dominion of darkness and translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. Well, what is the kingdom of his dear son? Look at verse 15. <coughs> Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. 
For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, all things were created by him and for him. Amen. Guys, I don't know what it's like. I know there's 20, y'all ever read over there in Revelation 24 thrones around God's throne? I mean, the Bible shows us this stuff, whether they be thrones, we'll draw these T's over up here, thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, right, in both realms, thrones, dominions, all these, all these thrones and dominions in heaven and earth, amen, they were all created by him and for him. Y'all understand that? I read Revelation and I, there's a throne in heaven. Amen. Dr. Rupp, you say it all the time. He said, said that book's about a kingdom. John goes up to heaven and what does he see? He sees a throne set in heaven. And around that throne were 24 thrones with 24 elders sitting on it. What do you think them 24 thrones are? They got to be over some dominion. Yeah. Why 24? How many hours are in a day? Mm-hmm. So how many dominions are in the earth? 24. Didn't God show you this with the sun and the moon? A great light to rule what? The day. And a lesser light to rule the what? Twelve dominions of light, twelve of darkness. Amen? I mean, I, I, listen guys, I don't have it all figured out. But what I know is that up here in heaven is the most high God. And a throne. Heaven is my throne. And that God who created all things... To be subject to his throne. He set under his throne. All these other thrones and dominions and principalities within these dominions. It's massive. I don't know how big it is. All I know is that God has been saving sinners now for 2,000 years to fill it up. Amen. 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 What is this? All of this is the inheritance of one man. That man is Jesus Christ. Who ascended up far above all what? And sat down on the right hand of God. There's only one being in heaven and earth that the Son is subject to and it's the Father. He's at God's right hand and God has put all power and principalities and authorities in both realms under his Son's feet. Amen? That's God's eternal purpose in Jesus Christ. You say, where do I fit into that? Because you were called into God's Son in accordance to the purpose that He gave us in His Son before the world began. Amen. We, we probably ain't going to get to the perfecting this morning. We as it's okay, though. I want you to understand this stuff. Look, look at verse 20. Christ is in, Christ is in, listen guys, Christ is doing something. He's got a will, he's got a purpose that God gave him. He ain't sitting up in the heavenly places twiddling his thumbs. Well, I wish, wish the Antichrist would hurry up and come so I could go back, you know. He's doing something. He's doing something in accordance to a mystery that God had kept hidden himself before the world began. Amen? And what you have to understand is that when Christ died on the cross, it was to make peace through the blood of his cross. Look at what he says in verse 20. By him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things where? Or where? Then the reconciliation in that verse ain't about men. Because men don't live up here. 
Where was the gospel preached? To every creature under what? The heaven. The gospel's preached down here. You getting it? Guys, when you study that Bible, you better, you better start paying attention to what you're reading. Because Christ, what Christ did is he died on a cross to make peace between God and man. And that gospel's being preached to every creature under the heaven and for the purpose of calling out of this earth men in accordance to this eternal purpose that God has in Christ. And what Christ is going to do is reconcile all things, whether they be things up here or things down here. You got it? Thrones, dominions, principalities, powers. Christ has the responsibility as God's son to reconcile all of these things that God created back to God. Amen? You know how many thrones and dominions and principalities are now operating in iniquity and lawlessness and contrary to the will of the creator? And I... To be honest with you guys, I don't think the creature is scared enough of that fact. That the creature is in rebellion against the creator. Amen. I tell you what, Biden better be knocking in his boots. So should Putin and Xi. You know, you know, what, you know what Psalm 2 said? Be wise, O kings of the earth. Be instructed, ye rulers. Serve the Lord and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son. Kiss who? Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. That's a warning to kings and rulers that are in the earth that they better honor God's son. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. The son already come once and guess what? The kings of the earth and the rulers took counsel together and said, let us cast their bands off and break their bands asunder. They took God's son and lifted him up, nailed him to a cross and cast him out. And God raised him from the dead and told the world, this is my son. You better honor him. You better submit. You better subject. Or there's going to be a price to pay. Amen. It's reality, guys. Christ is going to reconcile all of this back to himself and back to God. Look at Ephesians chapter 3. And you got to quit seeing yourself as an individual, guys. I mean, you are an individual, but as an individual, you are a member of Christ. So in accordance to this purpose that God has in Christ, you've been called out by the gospel, this little, oh, uncircumcised, dead Gentile. God called me by the gospel one day and took a dumb little hillbilly from West Virginia and quickened him and raised him and seated him in heavenly places in his son. To play a part in the eternal purpose that he gave us in Christ before the world began. And God has been doing this now for 2,000 years, guys. The body of Christ has been in, in creation now, being created by God, perfected by God for 2,000 years. And one day real soon, that man that ascended up is going to descend with a shout, the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God. And he's going to call out believers that have believed, whether they be dead and in the ground or alive and remain, he's going to call us out with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And he's going to call us up out of this place to meet him in the clouds and to take us up here and present us before the throne of our Father to receive our inheritance. Amen. <laughs> yeah, boy. Amen. World just starts fading into a irrelevant oblivion, man, in light of this stuff. Just 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 goes out there and you, you lose sight of it. 
Amen. This is our purpose. What is our purpose? We'll look at Ephesians 3, 4. See that phrase, mystery of Christ? Well, then the mystery ain't the mystery of the Gentiles. Like the, like the mid-Acts people just all the time think it's just about us. Amen. Jews and Gentiles outside of Christ are going to be kicked out of this place, man. The mystery is about God's Son, the mystery of Christ. Amen. You are not a Gentile anymore. A Jew is not a Jew in Christ. Circumcision or uncircumcision don't mean anything here. We are a new creature created in Christ in accordance to the mystery of Christ. Amen. And what is this mystery of Christ? We'll look at Ephesians 3.8. Unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of who? Christ. Amen. What do you think those riches are? They're the riches of the glory of his inheritance. Well, what is, what is his inheritance? All of it. Amen. He received the heavenly inheritance. Guys, you can search that Old Testament until the cows come home. And there's nothing in that Old Testament about a man receiving an inheritance in the heavenly places. Yeah. I've read it. Right there is man's dominion. So what's the mystery of Christ? The mystery of Christ is that he was exalted up here to the right hand of God and God gave him all this power and authority in the heavenly places as well. Those are his unsearchable riches. And get this now. This is here, here comes the good stuff, guys. You ready? This, this mystery of Christ concerning the heavenly places Come back to Ephesians 1. Before the foundation of the world, there was an election of God according to his grace and purpose. Amen. Look at Ephesians 1 4. Chosen in Christ when? Before the foundation of the world. Predestinated unto what? Adoption of children. Before the foundation of the world, there was an election of God. It doesn't mean he chose Paul Lucas. He chose me in Christ. I get in Christ in time, not before the foundation of the world. God called me by the gospel, and I believed that gospel. When I believed that gospel, I got in Christ. What the election of God is in accordance to his own grace and purpose, was that at this present time that you live in, guys, you are living in an unprophesied period of time. Amen? Prophecy dealt, the 70 weeks of Daniel, all that, you are now living in a period of time between the 69th and 70th week of Daniel. That was dealing with prophecy. You are living in a period of time that God had planned and purpose before the world began and then kept secret since the world began. This period of time you're living in was unprophesied. And so what is God doing at this time? He's caught what God elected by his grace and purpose before the world began was that at this present time he was going to call out Jews and Gentiles from out of this world. To become one with his son and to obtain a part of his heavenly inheritance. <clears throat> wow. Amen. That's what it's about, guys. So when you come to chapter 4 and he says, walk worthy of the vocation, what do you think he's talking about? He's telling you to walk worthy. Walk as somebody that knows what he's been called into. Not walking like the other Gentiles who walk in the vanity of their mind. 
having a darkened understanding, being alienated from the, the life of God through ignorance because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to work all uncleanness with greediness. That's how the Gentile world operates. They're past feeling. They're just out here operating in the world. Flesh, flesh, greediness, uncleanness, flesh, flesh, flesh. They don't know why they're here. I know why I have breath. I know why Christ died on a cross. I know why God called me by the gospel. I know why I was baptized into his son. And now it's time for me to walk worthy of that calling. Amen. Amen. Do you understand your calling into Christ? You, you are now being called out of this world to fill up the heavenly inheritance of God's Son. Look at Ephesians 1, 7. Here's, here's, here's what Satan and them didn't know. The Son of God came down, descended into the lower parts of the earth. Everything God had revealed in the Old Testament said, this is the seed who is going to inherit the earth. Satan took him. Boom. Nailed him to that cross. Now look at Ephesians 1.7. In whom we have redemption through his what? You know what Satan didn't know? What Satan didn't know was what Paul wrote in Ephesians 1, 4, and 5. That there was an election of God before the world began. An election for what? This up here. When Christ shed his blood, guys, I want you to understand this. When Christ shed his blood there, he's buying something. He's paying the price to purchase something that God had chose before the world began. Me. Purchased by the greatest price that a God could pay for me. And so when Christ died on that cross, guys, there was something that God had chosen before the world began and then kept secret and Christ is paying the price for it right there. Mm -hmm. Now look at verse 8. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. You see it? According to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are where? Heaven and earth. So God, after his son paid the price, God then made known the mystery of his will concerning both heaven and earth. You getting this? And you have now obtained an inheritance, verse 11. You have now obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to what? The purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. You've obtained an inheritance now in accordance to the purpose of God that he's now made known of the gathering of all things in heaven and earth. Now we already understand the earthly things, guys. Did God divide the earth to the nations or didn't he? We know about Israel's inheritance, don't we? Well, you think God's going to go back on that? You're Israel, are you? I'm so tired of people making God a liar. We know the earthly dominion, guys. He divided the earth to the nations. And he set apart a piece of land in this earth for the nation of Israel. He set apart a city in this earth for the throne of David. And he's going to give that throne to his son. But what is the mystery and the unsearchable riches of Christ? It involves the heavenly things. 
And your election is not of a Jew. You're not elect as Israel. You're not a Gentile. You're something new created in Christ. Seated in heavenly places in God's Son. Blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places as the new man. Amen. And then here's what happened. God's Son shed the blood to purchase a people for this election. Then he made it known. And then some 2,000 years later, he called a boy named Paul Lucas in West Virginia by that gospel. And when I heard that gospel and believed it, Bill, he took me and sealed me in his son. Sealed me in this purpose that he gave me in Christ until the redemption of the purchased possession. One of these days, God's Son is going to come and redeem what he bought here. Yes, amen. The price has already been paid. I'm already sealed as a purchased possession. And one of these days, God's Son is going to come and call me out of here. And what he's been doing since that day this old dumb man received the gospel of his son is he's been teaching me now through that book about the purpose he gave me and his son before the world began. The more I learn about it, the more I know how to walk worthy of it, and the more I understand what God is doing today, what he's want me to do in the future, it's a beautiful thing, man. I'm so thankful to be a part of this. As Paul said, giving thanks unto the Father who hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. Look at Ephesians 1 real quick, verse 22. Well, look at verse 20. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from, his, from the dead and set him at his own right hand where? So there's Jesus Christ up there. Right? Now pay attention. And hath, or, or, or set him at his own right hand far above all what? Principality, power, might, and dominion. That's where God's Son is. Far above all power, might, dominion, every principality, every name. Every name that is named. Not only in this world, but that which is to come. Amen. What a name. Amen. Amen. But you see, you see where Christ is? Far above? And then what did God do with everything? And hath put all things under what? His feet. All of this that God created is now under Christ's feet. Amen? But notice what else he did. And hath gave him to be the what? Head over all things to the church, which is his what? There you are. By one spirit you were baptized in the one what? Now look at that body. Christ, Christ, now everything is under his feet. But he's the head over all things to the church, which is his what? What is his body? His what? The fullness of him that filleth all in all. You know what the body of Christ is? What you are? You, you are an individual member, but all of us together make up his body, and that body is his fullness. Now get the, get the location of everything. Are you under his feet, or are you under his headship? The head is over us, and everything is under his feet. So what God is doing is everything that he made that has been, been put under the feet of Christ, he's now calling out men to make up the body that, that fills up his son. You are his fullness. God has called you to be a joint heir with his son, Jesus Christ. So you know what I am? I'm a measure of that fullness. 
I'm not the fullness. You're not the fullness. The body is the fullness. And so that massive inheritance that God has given his son, he gave me to his son to fill up, to make up a measure of that fullness in the heavenly places. I'm getting an inheritance in heaven one day. And now, when you understand that, it's important for you to know that one short life will soon be passed. Everything that we do down here is going to corrupt. Everything. Our clothing, our homes, our automobiles, everything that a man labors for in this world rots and decays and corrupts and goes back to the dust. That's all vanity. The only thing that is not in vain is this eternal purpose that God gave us in his son before the world began. And Paul tells us to walk worthy of that vocation. And what he's going to teach us now, and we'll, we'll get into this more next week, guys. Y'all understand the, the calling. Amen. That God, God took, Paul's going to remind me of my time past. You know what I was before I got in Christ? I was a dead sinner. I was already dead. Not only that, I was a Gentile. I had two strikes against me. Believe the gospel or it's strike three. Amen. The Jew was dead in sin, but he had circumcision. He had hope. We talk about this. I used to hear Keith Blades say a twice dead Gentile, and I never understood what he was talking about. And it comes from Colossians. You who were dead in sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh. You were twice dead to God. You were dead in sin and in uncircumcision. That's who I was in time past, Bill. And then God quickened that dead sinner. Raised him up and seated him in the heavenly places in his son. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So what am I to do now? Paul says walk worthy of it. And what, how, how do you walk worthy of this vocation? Well first you got to be somebody... That believes the vocation is real. Amen. Sure. And that any day Jesus Christ could call you out of here. Yeah. Amen. We may not see another presidential election, guys, so get over it. The Lord is at hand. Yeah. The Lord is at hand. It is now time to awake out of sleep. For the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. He's ever drawing near. And I may, listen, I may die in 30 years. I may still be here. The rapture may not happen. But that ain't going to change my view. Because when I lay down on that deathbed and give my last breath in this world, this world's long gone anyways. I don't care about it. And if I'm leaving it in 30 years, why do I care about it today? I don't care about its politics. I don't care about its economics. I don't care about capitalism, Marxism, socialism. I don't care about any of it. Christians should be operating under a higher wisdom than this world has ever seen. There you go, preacher. Amen. We should, they should see a love in us, a wisdom in us a grace in us, a righteousness in us. As the body of God's Son, we should be manifesting godliness and the life of our Savior to the whole world. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Look at what he says in Ephesians 4, 17. I'll close right here. Walk worthy. After Paul says all this, look what he tells you to do. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their, what? Gentile don't know about any of this. They're completely ignorant. Their mind is just in vanity. 
Ask your neighbor what he's doing, what, what's the point in all of it. The majority of them think now they're just a bundle of cells put together by evolution. I mean, so, so people, people, people today are so gone in the head, they're having, they're having, they're having identity crises at a level that we've never seen. They don't know who they are as a gender. They don't know who they are. They don't know what they are. They have forgotten their origin. They have forgotten their maker. They have forgotten their creator. And they don't know the purpose for which they are here. And that's why they're walking the way they walk. Oh, yeah. Their mind is empty. Yeah. And because of that, because of that empty mind, they have a darkened understanding. And that darkened understanding alienates them from the life of God through ignorance. And they have a blind heart. Yeah. They can't see. Paul said, don't you dare walk like that. You know better. You don't have a vain mind. You have a purpose. Amen. You need enlightened understanding so that you can know the hope of this calling. Right. Amen. And, and, and not be alienated from the life of God, but be filled with all the fullness of God through his son. Amen. What we're going to get into next week is how Christ, Christ is not done, guys. Christ has a ministry to his body as the head of that body right now. He's perfecting his body. When God raised him and seated him up here and made him the head of that body, Christ dispensed grace from that position for a ministry that we are to be partaking in. As the head of that body, what Christ is doing today is ministering his mind by his spirit to that body so that that body can grow up into him and become subject to him. How many minds are there in the body of Christ? One spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism till we all come in the unity of that faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Christ as the head of that body is now teaching his body, the members of his body, his mind, so that that body can be subject to him. And from that heavenly position, he dispensed something. The dispensation of grace given to Paul for us. And you now receive grace according to the measure of that gift. Guys, the dispensation is over. Dispensation is not a period of time. When we say dispensation, it was either dispensed or it wasn't. Is God still dispensing information or is the dispensation over? The dispensation is over. It's been dispensed. So what phase are we in? We're in the ministration of that dispensation. I received grace from God today according to the dispensation that he gave to be ministered to me. There's the grace... And I receive grace according to the measure of this gift. As I receive of the fullness of this dispensation, Christ is indwelling and forming in me. And as Christ becomes in me, I become a minister of Christ to others. My own perfecting, my own perfecting in Christ is for the work of the ministry in the edifying of this body. What is the edifying of that body? Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Amen. One of these days, Christ is going to present this church to himself. Amen. Just like the woman was made for the man and said these two are to be one. And that woman was made for that man to help him in the dominion work that God gave him in the earth. We've been given to Christ as his body. To be his body in his dominion in the heavenly places. Amen. One of these days he's going to present us to himself. And don't let any man deceive you guys. Don't let any man deceive you. If you are called to be the fullness of Christ, then the most important thing in your Christian life is to be filled. Amen. Amen.
My body has all kinds of members in it. Some little, some small, some with important roles, some with some you can live without. Amen. In a great house, there are vessels of honor and dishonor. If you are the fullness of Christ and a member of his body, how can you participate in a body without any knowledge of the head? This is what Paul said. Listen, guys, there's not enough isms. There's not enough. There's not enough isms and enough theological studies that is going to make up for your ignorance of God's son and subjection to him. You can sit down here and talk about dispensationalism and Calvinism and this ism and that ism. Do you know him or don't you? Paul said, I've suffered the loss of all things that I may know him. And I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of that high calling of God in Christ. What is that prize? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. 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 Any questions? That's uh, Genesis 1, 3 through 5. First time night and day are used in the Bible, they're capitalized. And then Paul says, we are not children of the night. We are not of the night nor darkness. We are all of the light, children of the day. Um, any other questions? Sorry, guys, I, I got hot, caught up on the purpose this morning again. But next, next, next week we will get into how this perfecting works through the head. The, 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 the first part of the perfecting was through the exaltation of Christ, the dispensation of Christ, the administration of Christ, and the edification of that body through that ministry. And we'll, we'll get into that next week. And, and to understand how you as a member are playing a part, not just in the future, but that there is a work that we are doing today as the body of Christ in preparation for that future. Because not only is Christ is going to present the church to himself, Paul is going to present us. He said, I, he, said, he said, I want to present you as a chaste virgin in Christ. And so that presentation, the minister is playing a part in getting the body of Christ ready for the presentation one day. And that will be the fourth part of the series on, on the presentation of the, of the church. All hearts and minds clear. Love y'all. Um, let's see. Brother Bill, you close us out. Amen, Brother Bill.